Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we will use Terraform module to create an application load balancer for our project. To start, the first thing I want you to do is open your project folder. Once you've opened your project folder, we will create a folder in our modules folder. To create a folder in our modules folder, right click on the modules folder and select new folder. Give the folder a name. I'll call the folder ALB. Once you've given your folder a name, press enter. The next thing we will do is create three files in this ALB folder. To create the first file, right click on it and select new file. Give the file a name and call it main.tf. Once you call your file main.tf, press enter. We will create the second file, right click on the ALB folder and select new file. Give the file a name and call it variables.tf. Once you've given the file a name, press enter. Next, we will create the third file. Right click on the ALB folder and select new file. Give the file a name and we will call it outputs.tf. Once you've given your file a name, press enter. These are the three files we will use to create the application load balancer module. Close the outputs.tf file for now because we don't need it. The next thing I want you to do is drag the variables.tf file to the right side of your screen and drop it there. Next, I want you to download and open the reference file that I created for this lecture in this video's description. This is the reference file we will use to create the application load balancer. And in this reference file, I've included the resource type and arguments that we need. The next thing I want you to do is select everything in this reference file. I'll click Ctrl A to select everything. Then right click to copy. Once you've copied everything, close your reference file. Come back to the main.tf file and paste it in there. Once you've pasted the syntax, scroll up. The first resource will create the application load balancer. And to create an application load balancer, this is the resource type and the reference name I've given it. The first argument we will enter is the name of the application load balancer. And just like we did in the previous project, we will use our project name to name our application load balancer. So it will read our project name dash ALB. To reference our project name, remember we created our project name in the VPC module. So if I select the VPC module and I select outputs.tf, in the outputs.tf file, this is where we export our project name. So what we need to do is copy the name here. Then come back to our main.tf file. In the brackets, we will reference that project name. To reference it, first we'll start by typing var dot and paste the project name in there. This is how we reference the project name that we export from the VPC module. Remember what we did in the previous lecture. Anytime you are using a variable in your main.tf file, don't forget to put that variable in your variables file. So we are going to create a variable in our variables file. I'll start typing variable. Once you start typing variable, select the autocomplete for variable block. Then that is going to create a variable block. We'll give the variable a name and the name of the variable is going to be project name. So paste project name in here. Once you've pasted the variable name, move this bracket back up. So it should read like this. The next argument we will enter is internal. And this is if we want the application load balancer to only route traffic internally. This application load balancer will be routing traffic to the internet. So we will type false for this value. The next argument we will enter is the load balancer type. And for the load balancer type, we will type application because this is an application load balancer. The next argument is security groups. 
and this is the security group we want to attach to this application load balancer. Remember we created our security group in the security groups module. So select the security groups module. In the security groups module, we export the values of our security group. Click on the outputs.tf file. In the outputs.tf file, we export our application load balancer security group ID. This is the value we will copy. Copy the name. Once you copy the name, come back to your main.tf file. To reference that value in the bracket, type var dot and paste that value there. This is how we reference the application load balancer security group ID that we export from the security groups module. Once you have added the value here, don't forget to create the variable here. So copy this and press enter and paste it down here. Once you paste it, we will modify the variable name. The variable name is going to be application load balancer security group ID. Copy this and paste it here. The next argument is subnet and these are the subnet we want to attach this application load balancer to. Remember your application load balancer will always be in a public subnet. So we are going to attach this application load balancer to our public subnet AZ1 and public subnet AZ2. Remember we created our subnets in the VPC module and we export the ID of our public subnet AZ1 and public subnet AZ2 in the outputs file. So click the outputs file. In the outputs file, this is the syntax we use to export the public subnet AZ1's ID and public subnet AZ2's ID. So what we would do is copy the public subnet AZ1's ID for now. Once you copy it, come back to your main.tf file. For the values of subnets, we are going to reference it in there. To reference it, we'll type var dot and paste the name there. Once you've pasted the name, press comma and space. The next thing we will do is copy the name of the public subnet AZ2's ID. I'll go back to my outputs.tf file. In the outputs.tf file, I'll select the public subnet AZ2's ID. Copy it, then come back to your main.tf file. After the comma, we will reference it in here. To reference it, we'll type var dot and paste the name there. This is all we need to do to reference our public subnet AZ1's ID and public subnet AZ2's ID. Once you've entered your value here, don't forget to create the variable here. So I'm going to copy this variable. I'm going to press enter, paste it. Then we will modify the variable name. The name of the first variable will be public subnet AZ1 ID. Copy this and paste it here. We will create the second variable. Once you copy that, paste it here. Then we will modify the name. The name of the second variable is public subnet AZ2 ID. Copy it and paste it here. The next argument is enable deletion protection. For this, we will type false for now. The next argument we will enter is the tags. And for the tag name, we will call it our project name dash ALB. We referenced our project name up here. So copy this and paste it in here. The next syntax will create the target group. This is the resource type to create a target group, and this is the reference name I've given it. The first argument is name, and this is going to be the name of our target group. We will use our project name to reference the name of our target group. So copy your project name up here, and paste it in here. 
For the next argument target type, enter IP. The next argument is port and the port is going to be 80. So type 80 in here. The next argument is protocol. The protocol is going to be HTTP. Type HTTP in here in all caps. The next argument is VPC ID. We export the value of our VPC ID from the VPC module. If you select the apples.tf file in the VPC module, this is the syntax we use to export the ID of our VPC. So copy the name. Once you've copied the name, come to your main.tf file. For the value of the VPC ID, we will reference it by typing var dot and paste that name in there. Once you have referenced the value of your VPC ID here, don't forget to create the variable. So in here, we will create the variable. We'll copy this. Press enter and paste it there. Once you paste it, we'll modify the name. The name is going to be VPC ID. Copy this and paste it here. The next argument is the health check and we will use these default values for our health check. If you want to change it, please feel free to change it. For the argument life cycle, create before destroy, we will type true. Then scroll down. The next syntax will create a listener on port 80 with a redirect action. This is the resource type to create a listener and this is the reference name I've given it. For the first argument, load balancer ARN. This will be the ARN of our application load balancer. Remember we created our application load balancer up here. So we'll copy the resource type and the reference name. Once you copy it, come back down, paste it here. Then remove the double quotes, add a period, go all the way to the end, remove the quote, add another period and type ARN. The next argument is port and the port is going to be 80. Type 80 in here. The next argument is protocol. The protocol is going to be HTTP. Type HTTP in here in all caps. The next argument is default action. For the default action, the type is going to be redirect. Anytime we receive traffic on port 80, we want to redirect it. And we are redirecting the traffic to 443. So that is why you see redirect here and we are redirecting the traffic to port 443. Scroll down. The next resource will create a listener on port 443 with a forward action. This is the resource type to create a listener and this is the reference name that I've given it. The first argument is the load balancer ARN and this is the ARN of our application load balancer. We referenced it up here. So I'm going to copy the value from here and paste it here. The next argument is port. The port is going to be 443. The next argument is protocol and the protocol is going to be HTTPS. In all caps, type HTTPS. The next argument is SSL policy and this is the default SSL policy we will use. The next argument is certificate ARN and this is going to be the ARN of our SSL certificate. Remember we created our SSL certificate in the ACM module. I'll select the ACM module. In the ACM module, we export the ARN of our certificate in the outputs.tf file. Select the outputs.tf file. In the outputs.tf file, this is the syntax we use to export the ARN of our certificate. So what we will do is we will copy the name. Once you copy the name, come back to your main.tf file and we will reference it here. To reference it, we will type var dot 
and paste the name there. Once you create a variable here, don't forget to add it to your variables.tf file. So in here, I'll copy this variable. I'm going to press enter, paste it in here. And I'll modify the variable name. The variable name is going to be certificate underscore ARN. Copy it and paste it here. The next argument is default action. And for the option type, it is going to be forward. In double quotes, type forward. This listener will forward our traffic to the target group. And for this option, this is where we specify the ARN of our target group. Remember we created our target group up here. I'll scroll up. This is where we created our target group. Copy the resource type and the reference name. Then come back down. Paste it in here. Remove the double quotes. Add a period. Come all the way to the end. Add another period and type ARN. This is all we need to do to create our main.tf file and variables file for the application load balancer. The next thing I want you to do is save your work. Click file and select save all. Once you've saved your work, close the variable.tf file and I'll close the outputs.tf file here. The next thing I want you to select is the outputs.tf file for the application load balancer. Select it. Once you open it, drag it here and dock it there. We will use this output.tf file to export some values from our application load balancer. To export this value, we will create the first output. So type output in here. Once you type output, select output block. We will give the output a name. The first output we will export from our application load balancer is the application load balancer's target group ARN. So in here, we will call this output ALB target group ARN. Once you enter the name of your output, we will enter the value here. So type value, space, equal, space. The value is going to be the ARN of our application load balancer's target group. Remember we created our target group up here in the main.tf file, scroll up. This is where we created our target group. So what you would do is copy the resource type and the reference name. Once you copy it, Come here and paste it there. Remove the double quotes. Add a period. Come all the way to the end. Add another period and type ARN. The next value we will export from our application load balancer is the application load balancer's DNS name. To export this value, we'll copy this output here and press enter twice, paste it down here. The first thing we will do is modify the name of the output. We'll call this output application load balancer DNS name. Once you've entered the name of your output, here, we will enter the value. For the value, this is the resource that is creating our application load balancer. So we'll copy the resource type and the reference name. Once you copy it, for the value here, paste it there. Then remove the double quotes. Add a period. Come all the way to the end. Remove the quote. Add another period and type dns underscore name. This is how we export the value of our application load balancer's DNS name. The last value we will export from our application load balancer is the application load balancer's zone ID. 
So what we would do is copy this output here and press enter twice, paste it here. We will modify the name of the output. We'll call it application load balancer zone ID. So replace this last value by typing zone underscore ID. The next thing we will do is modify the value. The value is going to be the resource type and the reference name of our application load balancer. So you can copy it from your main.tf file again. Then paste it here. Once you paste it, remove the double quotes, add a period, then come all the way to the end, add another period, and the attribute we want to reference is the zone ID. Type zone underscore ID. These are the values we want to export from our application load balancer. The next thing we will do is save our file. Click file and select save all. Then close the outputs.tf file because we don't need it anymore. You can also close the main.tf file. Now that we have created the module for the application load balancer, we can use this module to create our application load balancer in our project. To use this module to create the application load balancer in our project, select your project folder here. Once you select your project folder, select the main.tf file. In the main.tf file, scroll down. The next thing we will do here is press enter twice and create a module. To create the module that will create the application load balancer, we will start by typing module. Once you type module, select the autocomplete to create the module block. Then the next thing we will do is give the module a name. We are using this module to create our application load balancer, so call this module application load balancer. Once you've given the module a name, come down here. The next argument we will enter is source. Remember anytime you are referencing a module, the first thing you must enter is the source. And this is how you tell Terraform where the module you are referencing is located. To reference where our module is located, we'll start by typing source equal, then space, then the equal sign and space again. The value we will enter here to tell Terraform where our module is located is in double quotes, just like we did up here, you type two periods, forward slash, the name of the modules directory. We call the folder modules. So type the name in here. Once you type the name of the folder, enter another forward slash. And the module we want to reference is ALB. Type ALB in here. Once you have added the source for the module, the next thing you need to do is list all the variables that are in that module down here. If I open the variables.tf file for the application load balancer module. These are all the variables we are using in the application load balancers module. So what I will do is I will dock it here. The next thing we will do is down here, we will list all these variables. So press enter here. We will list the first one, which is project name. And paste it here. Once you paste it, press space and an equal sign and space again. And we will do the same thing for the rest. So list every variable you see here down here.
once you have list all the variables, the next thing we will do is arrange all the equal signs on top of each other. So I'm going to press tab here. Then I'm going to arrange everything on top of each other. Once you have arranged the equal sign on top of each other, the next thing we will do is add the value for this variable. The first one we will start with is the project name. Remember the value of our project name was created in our VPC module. To reference it here, we will type module. Once you type module, press dot. Then you will specify the name of the module where the value of the project name was created. The project name was created in our VPC module. And if you scroll up here, this is the name we gave the module. So you'll copy this name, come back down, paste it there. Once you paste it, enter another period and the value is going to be project name. Copy this and paste it here. I'm going to drag this a little bit to the right so you can see everything. The next argument we will enter is the application load balancer security group ID. Remember we export the value of our application load balancer security group ID in our security group module. So to reference it, we'll type module here. Once you type module, press period, and we will specify the name of the module. Scroll up in your file. This is the name we gave our security group module. Copy it, then paste it here. Once you paste it, enter another period and the value we want to reference is this. So copy this and paste it here. The next argument is our public subnet AZ1 ID. Just like we did for this, we export our public subnet AZ1 ID in our VPC module. So what we will do is we will type module dot, then we will specify the name of the module where we export the value of the public subnet AZ1 ID. The module is our VPC. I'll scroll up just to show you. This is what we call the VPC module. So I'll type that name there. Once you type the name of your module, press period, and we will enter this value. So just copy this and paste it here. The next argument we will enter is our public subnet AZ2 ID. It is similar to what we did here. So what we have to do is copy this, paste it here. Then don't forget to change this to public subnet AZ2 ID. So whatever value you put here has to match what is here. If you see, when I select it, this one is highlighted. The next argument is our VPC ID. Remember, we export our VPC ID also from our VPC module. So it is similar to what we did here. So I can copy one of this, paste it here. And the next thing we will do is modify the value. It is module. The name of the module where we export the value of our VPC ID is VPC. And the value we want to enter here is VPC ID. So copy your VPC ID here and replace this with your VPC ID. The last argument we will enter is our certificate ARN. Remember, we export the value of our certificate ARN from the ACM module. So what we have to do here is specify module. Once you specify module, we'll enter period and the name of the module where we export the value of the certificate ARN. The name of the module is up here. So we'll copy this and paste it here. Once you've pasted, enter another period. And the value we want to reference is the certificate ARN. So copy this 
and paste it here. This is all we need to do to create the application load balancer module. The next thing we will do is save our file. Select file and select save all. Once you've saved your file, close the variables.tf file because we don't need it anymore. Now we can create the application load balancer in our AWS account. To create the application load balancer, select your project folder, right click on it and select open in integrated terminal. This is going to open the terminal to our project folder directory. This is very important. Once you open the terminal to your project folder directory, the first command we will type is Terraform in it. Once you type Terraform in it, press enter. And there you go. We have successfully initialized with our AWS environment. Once you have successfully initialized, the next command we will type is Terraform apply. Once you type Terraform apply, press enter. There you go. When you type Terraform apply and press enter, the first thing Terraform will do is show you the plan. Here Terraform is going to create four resources in my AWS account. And if you scroll up here, you will see the four resources Terraform will create. Once you review the plan and you are happy with it, Terraform is asking you, do you want to perform these actions? We will type yes and press enter. There you go. Terraform is now creating the application load balancer in my AWS account. I'll give it some time to finish creating it. There you go. Terraform has finished creating the application load balancer in my AWS account. It took 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Let's go to our AWS account to verify that the application load balancer is there. In your AWS account, type EC2 in the search box and select EC2 under services. In your EC2 dashboard, on the left side, scroll down. Under load balancing, select load balancers. And there you go. You can see the application load balancer we just created. If you select the listeners tab, you will see we have two listener, one on port 80 and it is redirecting traffic to HTTPS. The other listener is on port 443 and it is forwarding traffic to our target group. You can also see the SSL certificate that we add to this listener. Everything looks good. Let's select the target groups. And here we have one target group. It is called Jupyter Target Group. If you select it, we don't have anything in this target group yet, but you can see all the settings here. Terraform has successfully created all the resources and we have verified that everything looks fine. The next thing we will do is go back to Visual Studio Code and push our update to our GitHub repository. In Visual Studio Code, to push your update to your GitHub repository, select Source Control here. And type a message here. I will type Create ALB. Once you type your message, click this check mark to commit it. And once you've commit everything, click Sync Changes to push it to GitHub. There you go. We have successfully pushed our updates to GitHub. Let's go to our GitHub account to verify that it is there. In your GitHub account, select this icon up here to come to the home page. On the home page, our repository is the Terraform modules repository. Select it. Then select the modules folder. 
in the modules folder you can see the application load balancer module we created if you select it in it you will see the main.tf file outputs.tf file and variables.tf file this is how we use terraform module to create an application load balancer if you have any questions or there's any part of this lecture you don't understand please leave your comments below thank you and i'll see you in the next lecture bye